Yes, hello there guys, girls, people of the internet and the YouTube gaming community. My name is Pipo Gaming, and today I'm bringing you guys 7 facts you need to know about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So this is straight from the Ubisoft blog, and I'm going to read everything it says. So the Industrial Revolution marked the dawn of the modern era. Technology was advancing rapidly, wealth, di wealth disparity and rampant, and people turned to the lives of crime to save themselves from harsh working conditions. It's at the tail end of the Industrial Revolution in Victorian London that Assassin's Creed Syndicate takes place. In the first part of the feature, we'll introduce you to our two main assassins, Victorian London and Jacob and Evie's mission there, and their gang, the Rooks. So, number one, Twin Blades. For the first time in Assassin's Creed, you will be able to play as two assassins, Jacob and Evie Fry. Born in a small town just outside London, these twin assassins were raised to follow the creed. Together the Friars head to London with the end goal of taking it back from Templar control. However, they both have very different ideas about how to go this. About how to... yeah. <laughs> Where Evie's tactical and resourceful, Jacob is brutal and impulsive. Jacob and Evie represent a different side of the English persona, said creative director Mark Alexis Cote. Jacob is a charismatic brawler. He's going to be the leader of London's criminal underworld. Evie's much stealthier. She's really, really intelligent and witty. One of the things I really like about two new characters is how they bounce off each other. A lot of the brand has to do with human DNA. Seen it in the past through DNA and senior producer Francois Pelland. Having a brother and sister, twins that share so much of the same DNA, feels like something that plays into the strengths of the franchise. The twins will have to use their unique skill to unite the London underworld under one banner and remove the stain the Templars have left on the great city, because whoever controlled London during the Industrial Revolution controlled the world. Number 2. The Centre of the World At the beginning of the 19th century, London's population was around 1 million people. By the time the 20th century rolled around, it has skyrocketed to roughly 6 million people. Such a massive and swift expansion is bound to create instability. Historian Jean Vincent Roy elaborates. Certainly, that is how it played out for Victorian England. There was huge progress and innovation, of course, but there were also extremely harsh working conditions, child labour, appalling hygiene, and sanitation. When the twins arrive in London, they are seeing everything for the first time. They have never been out of the city before and must learn all of its secrets alongside the player. Beside, because the game starts outside London, you reach London on the train with the characters and do you see it with, the firm, with them for the first time? Says Lydia Andrew, audio director. So that is a nice moment of revelation and a kind of seeing the city through their eyes as well. It allows us to narratively grow their experiences, grow their relationships. They discover the city and at the same time, the player is doing all those things too. They're not starting from the point of view of being locals or experts. So, when Jacob and Evie arrive in London, the Templars are winning, adds Pilland. They control all of the key aspects of London. You have to remember back then London was the biggest centre of humanity, with a quarter of the world's population living there. And the Templars were on top of that every part of the city. So in order to remove the Templars from power, the twins will need to make their way through each of the unique boroughs of London, winning over the locals and turning them to their cause. London really is, and was at that point, a city where the boroughs have very strong personalities, says Andrew. There are very strong visual differences, very strong socionomic differences, and very strong audible differences. A lot of differences. As you travel through each of the boroughs, you'll not only be able to see and hear a difference in your surroundings, <coughs> you'll also be able to feel it in a way you interact with your surroundings. Take the local police for instance. In a wealthy area like Westminster, like Westminster you'll be able to find Buckingham Palace and Westminster Abbey. The streets will be calling with police. You need to take your fights into dark alleys of the city in order to avoid their watchful eyes. But if you head over into which Whitechapel, rampant crime has pr practically caused the police to abandon the area. If you hijack someone's carriage and kill a few enemy gang members, chances are police the chances are no police will be around you to catch you. Number three, nobody fresher than my cliche. In order to take on the massive city, Jacob and Evie are going to need an army. On their journey to wrestle control from the Templars, the twins will unite the street gangs of London under a single banner. The rooks will be the fry's ears, eyes and blades in the deadly underworld. The criminal underworld is being controlled by the Templars, displays Cote. 
That's how they maintain their control of the city. So Jacob and Evie will call to the streets their home, and they will rise up and take this criminal underground and unite it under the syndicate of the people, of the assassins. That's how they control, take control away from the Templars and give it back to the city's people. Many of the Assassin's Creed's syndicate's activities and side quests will revolve around ringing over, ringing? <laughs> ringing over the various gangs in London's diverse districts, building influence to help them gain even footing in the war. Upon arriving in London, Jacob and Evie soon take the side of the impoverished majority, though not necessarily for the same reasons, says Roy. Evie is much more idealistic and closer to the Creed, and Jacob perceives the rugged London poor as natural allies to the cause. In the demo, we see Jacob taken on a hideout where the Templar controlled blighters are hiding out. Once you clear enough of the enemy gang, gang members out of the district and remove their influence, their, their Templar leaders will ambush you and challenge you to a gang war. You're faced off in iconic locations in one final struggle for control over the district. Take out the Templar gang leader. In our demo, this was gang leader was a rough and tumbled woman called Bloody Nora, and the district will belong to the Brooks. Number 4. Looking good? feeling lethal. Gone are the good old days where you can walk around the streets with a sword at your side and no one with a bat an eye. Concealment is now the key. In the world of organised crime, it's smarter to hide your advantage until the moment of attack. Combat is more, is more about getting in close and fighting dirty. In order to support them this new brutal new style, the assassins will need some more clever weapons. Weapons like the brutish brass knuckles and the compact revolver, or the gentleman's cane sword and the exotic cuckoo cookery knife. This fiercely efficient weapon coming together to form the perfect arsenal for an assassin in the industrial revolution. London was a harsh and forgiven and unforgiven to many, says historian Jean Vincent Roy. Even though progress permits the city throughout the century, it remains an old city, with a long history and many dark corners. Shady back alleys, densely populated slums, layers upon layers of old, crumbling buildings right next to the sparkling new ones. This environment makes for close and vicious encounters. In the blink of an eye, a street full of gat, a street full of young people loitering about could turn into a highly violent brawl. Fists, knife, and sometimes guns would come out in an old flash. Would come, would come out in a flash and vanish just as quickly upon the arrival of the Metropolitan Police. It was a violent underworld under the skin of respectability. Is what you is what I would call it. You, you may not see people walking down the streets of London with swords openly hanging at their sides. But you probably won't see too many people just waving guns around either. Though the 19th century did see incredible advancements in firearms technology, guns just weren't a very common thing to see in London. They would have been hidden, tucked away under their coats. Firearms weren't openly carried out in London, like they would have had to be on the American frontier, for example. Public displays of weapons were not just a thing in Victoria London, this also sparked some pretty creative ways to conceal firearms and other weapons. Leading to a less obvious display of force, but not necessarily leading or to a corresponding loss of obsessive power. Number 5. A modern assassin's toolbox. The, assass the world of Assassin's Creed Syndicate is like no world you've ever seen in Assassin's Creed. Carriages fill the streets, which are in turn to be made much wider and support the new traffic flow. The buildings are taller than ever, and dense crowds pack the sidewalks. You need some help getting around the city, and that's where the introduction of the rope launcher comes in. A new addition to the Assassin Gauntlet, the rope launcher will propel you to new heights at a faster pace, or even let you create a zip line between buildings and avoid the streets altogether. The rope launcher can be used at any time on any building and becomes as useful as the hands of either Jacob or Ely. In addition to the new tools to your disposal, there will also have been some changes to made to familiar toys. Take the upgraded hallucinogenic darts, for example. In our demo, we see Jacob trying to get rid of a small group of enemy gang members. Rather than use a dart to just one of them, he fires it at a nearby uh, fire drum. Pardon me. <laughs> they are warming themselves around. The effect is an explosive shower of hallucinogenic gas that hits multiple opponents, calling them to attack one another in a blind rage. Sweet rides. Six sweet rides. Now, why walk in style when you can ride in style? Any carriage you see on the busy streets of London can be yours, yes, even if they're already occupied. You can knock someone out of the driver's seat or hide in the actual carriage itself to escape from your pursuers. In their demo, Jacob hijacks a carriage to chase a fleeing target, but it escalated quickly, noticed by the local police. 
after his carriage begins to take too much damage, he begins he makes a daring leap into another nearby vehicle and neatly kicks the driver out before continuing his chase. Of course, if you do all these stunts, you can be sure to make enemies as well. They will be able to board your ride and rip apart you, or rip you right from your seat and throw a good old fashioned ball on top of the roof of the carriage. Square off against your foes or leap to the relatively safety of another carriage top, performing an in increasing dance over the vehicles of London. You'll also be able to access to many other common periods. Trains, this was an era of speed. These marvels of the modern age allow people, goods and information to travel more rapidly than ever before and they provided a brand new playground for the assassins. You may find yourself racing down the length of London's many trains as you take on your enemies. At number 7, getting a stealthy upgrade. As Jacob enters a restricted area in our demo, he slips effortlessly into stealth mode, whipping off his stylish top hat and pulling up the familiar hood of his bread breadwin <laughs> breadwin but no sorry, I won't do that again. He uses his rope launcher to rapidly propel himself to a nearby rooftop and get a quick layout of the guards in the area. From there, he logs onto a guard patrolling another rooftop, sends a zipline out over the guard's head and quietly moves into place above him before dropping down off the rope and effortlessly silencing the watchman. After that, it's just a matter of working his way through the base and freeing in prison recruits for the rooks. Down on the ground level, Jacob can swiftly slide into cover and make his way through enemy territory. Assassin's Creed Syndicate moves away from the hard snap cover function of Unity in more favour of modern software snap to give the players a more natural transition from stealth to navigation. Jacob quickly darts around cover as he makes his way through the restricted area whistling to grab a guard's attention before noisily taking him down and dragging his body to a better hiding place. When the time comes to hop out of stealth and engage enemies in masses, you'll find combat is much faster paced than ever before. Latency has been cut out in half and multiple enemies will attack you all at once. When you've got a crowd closing in on you, you have to put, put all your reflexes to the test as you focus on stunning opponents to take them out of the fight for a few precious moments. Luckily, this isn't Jacob's area of expertise. His style is very focused on close combat, says Kote. You'll see him breaking bones and really putting enemies on the ground and taking them down. So guys, that was Assassin's 7 things you need to know about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Let me know guys in the comments down below. I am uploading daily content for you guys about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. All the latest information I can get, I'm giving you guys. So like this video, comment down below what's your favourite thing in Assassin's Creed Syndicate already. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I want to get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of this month. And hopefully I want to get... I'm going to get 3,000, yeah, and then 5,000 before Syndicate is released. Bye for now. Have a great day.